Hello everyone, so last time we came to you guys here, we were talking about one thing that is very near and dear to our hearts, that was champagne. Uh, well, the one thing that goes well with champagne, or not champagne, but drinking, uh, is food. So that's our other big love language here in the Keys household. Uh, for those of you who don't know me that well, I actually did go to culinary school for a brief stint before moving to Paris. Uh, not because I wanted to be a chef or anything, but because uh, us and our circle of friends absolutely love cooking and eating and drinking together. Uh, so I figured if we're going to do this, why not take it up to the next level? Um, as Cheyenne says, I'm an all-in kind of person. Whenever I put my mind to something or decide I want to do something, I literally go all-in. Uh, and school is it for this. So we're going to talk about uh, duck a l'orange today, or duck with orange sauce. I'm not sure if this would be officially a l'orange sauce because it's going to be very basic, but this is so, so easy for you to make at home. Uh, literally, if you can pan sear a chicken breast, a pork chop, pork tenderloin, you can make this dish in about 30 minutes, okay? Uh, we are not going live uh, just because of the time that it takes in between searing and rendering fat out and everything, so we didn't want to bore you for 30 minutes. Um, but we'll be cutting in and out and just clipping the video together, all right? So we're gonna start off with first is the duck breast. Here in France, uh, we're very lucky in that duck breast is about as common as chicken breast is back home. Uh, so if you go to the grocery store, a uh, regular average duck breast might cost you five euro. Uh, the cheaper ones are gonna be a little tougher, a little gamier, not as tender. This one we bought from our local butcher and this was 10 euro a piece. Uh, this will definitely be enough to feed uh, both of us once we slice it up. So the first thing you wanna do is when you get it out, just like any meat, you're gonna make sure that you pat it nice and dry. Uh, water is the enemy of searing and browning, or the Maillard reaction, as it's called. Uh, this one is actually already fully prepped for us um, because I bought two, and we did one of them the other night for our anniversary uh, dinner, and we decided that we could not eat both of them together. So. Uh, normally, this would come without the scoring of the fat and everything. It would just be one big thing. Uh, if your butcher doesn't trim it up for you, you're going to want uh, a fillet knife. There's going to be fat hanging over the edge here. You just want to trim that up on all sides. Uh, you don't want to take it in too close because this is all going to shrink up, right? So if this were cut even closer, it would shrink up and all the meat would be exposed. Now, uh, you see how the meat or the fat's very soft and moving around right now? that would make it very hard to do this scoring especially if your knife isn't very sharp so if that's the case if it's if the fat just isn't this thick or if it's just the the duck breast has come up a little in temperature then throw it in the freezer for like 10 minutes that'll firm the fat up and then you can go ahead and do these scores when you do the scores you see how it's like not all the way to the skin here it's a little bit closer but the butcher did this so um you don't want to go all the way to the actual meat. You just want to stay right through here. This is going to do two things. One, it's aesthetic. So once it's all cooked, it's going to be very nice and pretty. But more importantly, it functions to give all the fat uh, basically a channel to drain out and render out whenever you're cooking in the pan. So if you see how thick this fat is, this is going to get uh, probably reduced down to half of that. Okay. So once you've done that, you will salt and pepper it uh, on both sides. As my culinary instructor said to us, why do you salt and pepper both sides? Because I'm going to eat both sides. That's why. Um, and when you are salting things, the chefs on TV, they don't do this just to look fancy or anything, but you want to take it from a high position and sprinkle. The reason is when you're going from a high spot, it allows the salt to uh, spread out and be evenly distributed. If you were to just do it from here, See how it all puddles up, whereas if you go a lot higher, it's going to spread out. So it's not just about being fancy, it actually uh, functions for something, okay? So I've done both sides already. We've got everything scored. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about real quick is mise en place. Uh, that is not just used in French, it's used in culinary settings around the world, but it is French. Uh, it basically means everything in its place. So if you pan down here, you will see this is my mise en place. Uh, for mise en place, you want to read through your entire menu, or not menu, your recipe, from start to finish. Look at all the ingredients, look at all the steps, and see what's going to happen. Uh, because one of the steps down below in the recipe might say set the oven to 400 degrees. If you wait till the end for that, well, you're gonna to have to wait for the oven to come up. 
So what we have here is the uh, white wine vinegar, the sugar, uh, stock, butter, and orange. So this is all going to be made uh, or going to be used to make our sauce. Uh, and I actually put it in, when I'm doing my mise en place at home, I put things in the order that I'm going to use them. So that way when it says add this to the uh, pot, add this, everything is pretty much in the order that it needs to be. All right, so we're gonna start cooking this. Uh, I highly recommend a cast iron pan uh, for the duck breast. One, because it just, it holds the heat and distributes it so much better. Uh, if you don't have a cast iron pan, I would then just go with a regular stainless steel. Do not use non-stick. Uh, if you use non-stick, you're not going to get the fawn, you know, that kind of burnt, crusty, uh, crusty stuff that sticks to the pan. That is what becomes the foundation of your sauce. So if you just use a non-stick pan, you're not going to have that, okay? So you always want to start in a cold pan with the duck breast because it's got so much fat, it's going to render out and you're going to have so much fat that you're going to pour it off. We'll talk about what to do with that stuff later. Um, so we'll just set it fat side down. We're going to turn it to uh, a medium heat. Uh, medium heat is just going to let the fat render out nice and slowly. If you go too high, it's going to render out super fast and just burn and it's not going to be good. Uh, most duck breasts that aren't or that are average thickness, you don't have to put them in the oven to finish. Some recipes will say put your oven on 325 or 400 and then finish it off in the oven. My experience almost every time I've done duck breast, you can do it on one side with the skin, render all the fat out, get it nice and golden brown, turn it over and then finish it on that side and it's perfectly fine. Uh, what you do want to have is maybe just your oven on a low or warm setting. So when you take it out and it's done, you can just put it in there while you make the sauce and it stays at a good temperature. Okay, so we're going to let this uh, render some fat out. We'll come back and show you just how much fat gets rendered out here. Uh, and then we'll talk about what to do with that. All right, so stay tuned. All right, so it's been maybe five minutes or so. Uh, if you zoom into the pan, See, it's starting to look nice and pretty, but it's not quite golden brown enough. But I have not drained the fat once yet, and watch how much has rendered out. Uh, it's quite a bit of duck fat there, as many chefs refer to it as uh, liquid gold, basically. So you see it's got, you know, little impurities and stuff in there. If you have a fine mesh strainer, uh, which I have somewhere, something like this, then whenever you're done, you can just strain it through there, put it in the fridge for maybe one or two months. You can put it in the freezer for even longer. Uh, a lot of people back home in uh, Louisiana will use the duck fat to make their roux, especially if they're doing a duck and andouille uh, gumbo. And uh, one of the things I like to do with it is duck fat roasted potatoes, right? So instead of using butter or oil, use the duck fat and roasted potatoes in there. Nice little side dish, right? Uh, so it's still not quite there yet. It's been on uh, five for my range the entire time so far. Uh, and we'll just keep doing that because if it just sits in the fat, it's not going to render out quite as easily or it's just going to get soggy, right? So every now and then I'll tilt it just to see if it's starting to cool up. If it is, I'll drain it out uh, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so we'll check back in a little while and then we'll get the sauce prepped. All right, so we're just about time to flip it over. So not sure how good the light is there, but golden brown uh, is one of my favorite culinary instructors always said, GBMD, golden brown means delicious. Uh, you can also see just how thin the fat has rendered down to, right? So now we just turn it over and we're going to let it go until uh, it hits about 125. Medium rare is where duck really should be served, otherwise it's just going to get really tough and chewy. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, medium rare for duck is 135. Uh, since we're going to be doing a pan sauce and everything and the temperature is going to continue to come up, I will pull it when it's about 125 and then just let it slowly rise up while it's warming. Uh, if you have yourself a good little meat thermometer here, this is what we use. If you go on Amazon, uh, CDN thermometer, this should come up. The nice thing about it is, you see how thin 
the needle gets there. So when you do pierce the meat, you're not gouging a big old hole and letting all the juices come out. Uh, and it registers super quickly. So I will start putting it in through here in the fattest part whenever I think it's almost done. Uh, it's been a while since I've done duck breast, except for the other night, of course. Um, but I want to say it's maybe usually another 10 minutes or so to get up to that point. Uh, so we've got everything ready for our sauce, but uh, you can see I already attacked this orange from the last duck that we did two nights ago. Uh, anytime you're using citrus uh, in a dish, if it's going to be in a vinaigrette, if it's going to be in quinoa or pasta or something, uh, one of my very good friends uh, who went to the Culinary Institute of America, Melissa Samuels, many of you in New Orleans know her from Melissa's Fine Pastries, she taught me just how much more um, vibrant the taste and aroma is from the uh, actual peel and the zest versus the juice. So if you want to test yourself, uh, when you cut the orange or lemon or lime, smell the fruit and take your fingernail and scrape up the zest and smell that. The aroma is probably three to five times more intense. Uh, so we're going to use that. So you get your zester and don't move the zester, move the fruit. Keep the zester in place like that. I'm just working around and try to hit the spots that are left on this. And your finger down, and voila. And we'll use the rest of this for the actual juicing after. Uh, so this requires about two tablespoons of stock. Um, you might ask, well, what am I gonna, like, where am I gonna get two tablespoons of stock when back home it usually comes in the quart size container? Uh, well, you've probably heard people that make stock at home, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll get the little ice cream trays uh, and fill one of those with stock and then put the rest in little pint or quart size containers. So when you're making just a simple pan sauce and you only need about two tablespoons, pull out one of those ice cubes. Generally that's right at about two tablespoons, okay? Uh, and I wanna say it's one tablespoon of the white wine vinegar, uh, about a tablespoon and a half or two tablespoons of sugar, uh, and then the cold butter, which is for the uh, Monte au beer, Monte au beer, not beer. Uh, that's to finish the sauce, and we'll talk about that when it comes time to as well. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. So we just hit about 118, 120, and it's starting to come up pretty quickly, so I'm going to take it off, uh, just because with the video it might take a little bit longer to do the sauce. Uh, I have these little things that I always just put my protein on and we'll just set that in the oven. It's on more. Uh, if you're using cast iron, it's going to stay hot for quite a while. So I usually turn the heat all the way off or just turn it down to one or two. Uh, you want to drain all this fat out the pan. You want a little bit of fat in there, but you're going to add some butter, but it's got plenty of fat in there for us. Okay. So when you're usually making a pan sauce, if you've been sauteing something that was a very high heat, I usually give it a couple minutes to like cool down real quick. Uh, the few things, first, I don't have time with me, time would normally be put into this. Uh, and then what else was I gonna say? Um, you could use wine, you could use shallots also. Uh, if you were using shallots, you would throw the shallots in, stir it around with the wine, with the uh, fat and the butter. Then you would pour a little bit of wine in that would deglaze it so that'd break all that little burnt stuff up, create some flavor. You cook that down until the wine just about evaporates. Then you'd add everything else. So the sugar, the stock, the orange juice, the zest, uh, and then you cook that down. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna toss in two tablespoons of butter. Pretty close. All right, I can tell that it's actually not very hot, so I'm gonna put it back on the heat. Get this butter going around here. So this vinegar will help deglaze the pan a little bit. So you see all that bubbling? That's everything coming up. From the bottom of the pan. Scrape all that up, that's going to contribute to the flavor. All right, 
sugar. It's almost like you're making a gastric. Get that all incorporated, stir in the stock. sure to catch any seeds. I think the recipe may be called for half a cup or something like that. Um, so that should be good there. And then of course our zest. All right. So and now we're just going to let that simmer and bubble and it's going to cook down. As it's cooking down, which basically just means evaporating and getting more concentrated, uh, it's going to become a little bit thicker because of the sugar. It's going to start to form a little bit glaze. And when it gets down to about maybe, I don't know, three to four tablespoons, uh, which is plenty to sauce this one duck, that's when we'll go ahead and do the butter uh, and get ready to plate up and all that fun stuff. So we'll check real quick on this guy. Show you where he is right now. So that's where he is. Uh, and we'll go. So yeah, I pulled it out at 118. It's already up to 134.9, 136. So this might actually be a touch more than medium rare than what we like, uh, but it shouldn't be too, too bad. So I'm gonna turn the oven off to make sure it doesn't add any heat. And you can see this cooking down. So this is going to take a little bit, uh, a little while to reduce. We'll come back in a few minutes and talk about that. Okay, real quick. Uh, this is already reduced by at least a quarter, but I wanted to show how much is in the pan to start. Uh, it might have been reduced by half already. So that's how much is in there uh, to get. Yeah, it's definitely reduced by half. So I just wanted you to see that to get an idea of how much is left in the pan, the finished product. Uh, once it's time, which is going to be very soon. Uh, another thing is taste as you go. So this is really hot. Obviously you want to blow on it before sipping it. Every now and then you might want to taste it, see if it needs a little bit more uh, orange, if it needs a little bit more salt or anything. Uh, and then it'll be ready in just a few minutes. Okay, we're just about getting there. Uh, and here comes another French culinary term for you, mappe. Nappe basically means uh, it's used for sauces and it's to coat, to coat the back of a spoon. So when you coat it, you do a line and it doesn't close off. And that means the sauce is nappe and that's about good to go. So you see how much thicker this is now? So now we're gonna do the monte à deux. The most important part for mounting the butter is the butter has to be cold. Uh, so you turn the heat off, take it off there. Uh, we've got our cold pad of butter. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna thicken the sauce a bit and it's gonna give it a nice gloss or sheen. And you just kind of swirl it in nice and gently, right? Add a little bit of richness to the sauce. And that is it. Because this is such a thick, glazy sauce, you use the back of the spoon, push it all to one side, kind of incorporate that butter a little bit. Uh, and now it's almost I have been just putting something under the pan, keep it all angled right there so that way it doesn't cook out. So, now it's time to plate up. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it on the bias like this. Presentation. So, yeah, it's a little overcooked. Not, I wouldn't say overcooked but it should be much more pink than that. But that's why I'm a photographer and not a chef. And these little end pieces are, hmm, what I like to call chef tap. Oh, one thing I forgot because uh, it really didn't happen too much on this one is if this pan over here would have been full of juices I'd have poured that in towards the end of the sauce and added that to the flavor so now that that is all there take your spoon Yeah, 
well, not so fancy, but I guarantee you it tastes better than it looks. We would come back and clean the plate, wipe up all of that stuff. Uh, anyway, I'm hungry. I want to eat. And it's two minutes away from our 8 p.m. clap for first responders here in Paris. Uh, so hopefully you try this. You can uh, put comments and questions down there and we'll answer them all. But bon appétit, bon degustation.